It's time for another quickie. I'm using a super glued chuck to make six countersunk brass jaw retention washers for the ends of the M12 studs on my tube mandrel spider. The washers need to be a loose sliding fit in a 16mm recess in the jaws, so I'm turning them to 15.5mm OD. They're mounted with M4 countersunk screws, so I'm drilling them 4.2mm ID and using a countersink bit to form a recess deep enough to take the posi-drive screw heads. My ancient new all sapphire DRO has got a bit of non-linearity in the centre of the range. It's only 20 micrometres out, but that can be significant, so I need to check with the micrometer to be certain. Those of you who are paying attention might just spot the delicately executed edit where I realised part way through making the hole that the stub drill I'd picked for its stiffness and general niceness was rather too stubby. So I swapped it for a job length split point cobalt. There's something vaguely alarming about how it comes out longer than when it went in. This'll end up being the underside which nobody will ever see. Except that I'll know it's there, so I'll give it a light chamfer. One of the joys of not being a professional is that I can choose to make things nice without justifying it to anyone. With the end face prepped I can part off the first washer, then rinse and repeat for the other five. I decide to hand finish the chamfer on the hole so I could leave the catching rod inside the workpiece. I seem to have used all of the YG1 asymmetric parting inserts that I got from Cutwell, so there's a deformed ring to remove. As it's small I can just use pliers, for anything bigger I use a milling vise to get a clean cut. I need to clear the holes so I can use a drill shank as an alignment tool for facing and countersinking the second face. To finish the second face I'm using a super glue chuck technique that's an updated version of the wax chuck methods used by clockmakers for turning the faces on thin delicate parts. The super glue is a high viscosity type which doesn't drip or run. It also seems to last a long time in the bottle without setting, but it sets in 10 seconds or so on brass and aluminium parts, which is a good thing. A quick clean with acetone should make sure the faces stick well. A smear of oil on the drill helps make sure it doesn't get stuck, which would be a bad thing. This cyanoacrylate jollop's a bit runnier than mayonnaise and a bit less runny than cream, and sticks better than either of them, especially to nitrile gloves. Or fingers. Rather than trying to clean off the remnants of glue from the chuck, I'll just take a skim cut and zero the DRO so I can machine all the washers to the same thickness. J 
gentle heat is all it takes to ruin CA Glue's adhesive properties. Propane power. This was shot before the jaws were fully machined. More detail on that and some exciting action shots of Spider Mandrel doing its thing in the next enthralling episode. That'll have to do for this instalment of the Tube Mandrel project. The sun's shining and it's ludicrously warm for January, and the Chihuahuas are telling me it's time for a walk in the glorious East Riding of Yorkshire countryside.